Well, most of us human beings go around feeling like the world's happening to me. That uh, what this person said or did or didn't say or didn't do and makes me happy or it makes me miserable. I'm a victim of what's there or I've got to get this person's love in order to have love. We see love as something we need to get from somebody else. Then we need to have them behave a certain way for me to even see it as love. And what all that does is deprive us of a huge amount of love. Because the main thing that brings love is just being love. And if I'm being love towards somebody, I'm more likely to be attracting it too. But not because it's a commodity I'm trying to get out of somebody. And unfortunately, most of our culture, you know, thinks that way. So if I can get in touch with what my thoughts are and what the results of those thoughts are, then I can begin to be more in charge of my life. Because if I let myself think worry thoughts all the time, then it's no wonder I don't accomplish whatever I'm worrying about. And I might even attract those kind of ways of being seen by others, you know, if I'm thinking about those kind of thoughts. Whereas if I can see myself thinking, oh, thoughts that really support me, thoughts that are compassionate, things where people seem experience my caring and my being present. You know, if I can see that, find myself thinking about thoughts of how I can accomplish this, or I can do this, or I can complete that, or I can make this happen. Instead of, oh my God, I don't know how I can do that. I'm going to flunk at that, or I'll fail at this, or I'm sure I won't succeed at that, or whatever it is. If I'm worrying about not doing it well enough, it might just come from old childhood programming. And so what we're now knowing is that a lot of times we need to go back and deactivate our childhood programming in order to really change our patterns of thoughts. Because we learned about the computer and how to make the computer work from how the brain works. So if we can do it back the other way now too, we now know if our computer is all gummed up and not working well, we go delete, delete, delete on programs that we don't like, or that's coming up the computer and install a new program. Well, that's, that's our taking back then that information about how our brains work that even created the computer. But we forget to see that there's a correlation there. And that if I have a whole multitude of thoughts that are not helping my life, they probably just got programmed in, original programming. And I might have picked it up from my mother or my father, and one of those might have been brought up, who knows, it might have been passed on for three generations that they passed on their way of thinking and interpreting things. And they might have not been very helpful. It might have been things that we just didn't even like ourselves, but we internalized it. So we need to spend time, a lot of the times, seeing where those thoughts came from, especially the ones that we found aren't helpful. They aren't making us feel happy and joyful and healthy and uh, loving and kind and things like that but are making us feel other ways that are, are negative emotions, to be critical of people all the time, be defensive all the time, to judge others and what's going on all the time, judge ourselves and put ourselves down. If we're thinking those kind of thoughts, that's the world we're creating for ourselves. And so we need to explore, explore ways to see how did my thought systems come about? And let me check the ones that don't help me. And let me find and use the tools that can help me deactivate those that aren't really helpful. But then begin to use the one and practice those that I see are most helpful and that are attracting the kind of things I, and outcomes I want in my life. Certainly if you'd like to learn more about these methods or these tools or the combinations of them and how they work, I'll be glad to talk with you about it. You could contact me by phone or by email or you could call me and we can make an appointment or two and we could discuss it more in relation to your area, your issues, your problem areas, and what would be effective for you to do together. So I'd be happy to explore those things with you. I have a, uh, people who want to come in person can see me in New York City or in Westport, Connecticut. Um, others may prefer to have session by Zoom or telephone or FaceTime or things like that. So that's possible too, especially during this coronavirus situation. So whatever works for you is uh, I'm open to, to explore with you, but I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have about what this therapy is like.